Jessica. All right, thank you, thank you, Jennifer. Good afternoon, everybody. It's funny that uh, Jennifer just hit play. Now that we're recording the spotlight on main events, um, you will be able to see over the course of time, Michelle in different outfits saying exactly the same thing at the beginning of all of them, which is spotlight on main hands down, I think my favorite event that Connecticut Main Street does, and I think it's fair to say it's a sentiment that is shared by the staff. And why we love Spotlight on Main so much is because it gives us an opportunity to broadcast through the, uh, the, uh, the through an actual town that is implementing what we consider to be the most important thing that we can trumpet about our community, which is our Main Street our village centers and our downtowns and communities, no matter how big or how small, it's that part of town that we all gravitate towards, that we all associate with, that people come to visit, that our, our arts and cultures are activated on, that our small businesses are um, thriving on. That is what it's all about. And even though we go to all of these wonderful places around Connecticut and we see main streets in action and it just looks so seamless and so effortless, uh, what you will learn today is that, in fact, it's not. Uh, to have a great Main Street requires a lot of effort. It requires coordination and partnership with a lot of stakeholders. And when you're in a town like Windsor, if you're lucky enough uh, to have a Main Street program that's located in your town, then you have that point person that is there that can help with that management. So Connecticut Main Street Center, we are a statewide nonprofit. We are a coordinating program for Main Street America. And what that means is that we're here as a resource for communities across the state to help them with their Main Street management. We uh, abide by the four points, which is a methodology that has been tested nationally by Main Street America. And we go into communities and help with their organization, their design, promotion and their economic vitality by bringing programming, assessments, technical assistance, advocacy that support their vibrancy. So today is Windsor's Day, so I don't want to take too much time away from their opportunity to shine, but I do want to bring attention to two new programs that are coming soon from Connecticut Main Street. One, and they're all uh, not only in your packets, but in the, um, I don't know what we call them, the, the table uh, signage with QR codes um, where you can learn more about them. So the first is Main Street Accelerator. It is a great new program that we just developed that we're inviting communities to apply as a cohort where they can come to us with a project uh, that they have in mind, a challenge that they want to address on their Main Streets, and they will have the opportunity to learn uh, to uh, and then to develop that project and get some funding at the end having an information session on that online virtually uh, next Thursday starting at 1045 and registration is on our website and then with that QR code and we have a really exciting event coming up in October a summit that is all about positioning our main streets in a social media environment this isn't about posting stuff yourselves necessarily online but it's about towns and main streets that are actually actively working with social media influencers working with entrepreneurs that have a presence and what is that ripple effect on uh, downtown. So the keynote address from Anthony Anthony, the state's chief marketing officer. So it should be really, really exciting. Um, none of this can happen, obviously, without a team of really talented people. Um, we are so lucky at Connecticut Main Street to have a wonderful staff um, that bring their expertise and their passion for Main Street every day to all of you. We have Carl Rosa, our field services director, Kristen Lopez, our Education and Training Director. Jennifer Hunter, who is our Events Manager and Professional Affiliate Liaison. Um, Christine Schilke, our Communications and Strategy Director. And Judith Stahl, who is our Business Operations Manager. Um, I'd love to thank our board members. We are also very fortunate to have a great board with um, an equal passion for Main Street. Our board chair, Laura Peary from Peary Associates is here. Um, let's see, George Rockwell from CCM, who is also a board member. Matt Kaufman from Hartford Healthcare, who's also a board member. Thank you all so much for all that you do for us. Um, we want to thank the Department of Economic and Community Development and Eversource, who are key uh, funders for our organization and allow us to do what we do. Um, 
So why Windsor? Why are we so excited to be here? First, Windsor has such a strong connection to Connecticut Nation. We are so lucky to um, have benefited from Patrick's leadership at our organization. So lucky to have a champion and a partner in State Representative Jane Garibay. And um, Windsor, as you will see on your walking tours, really exemplifies what it is to have arts and culture, business, economic development, the Chamber of Commerce, everybody working together to create a thriving, vibrant ecosystem that anybody would be thrilled to call home. Anybody would be thrilled to open a business, a restaurant, anybody would be thrilled to visit as an in-state tourist or an out-of-state tourist, and you are going to be amazed at all of the things that you're going to get to see. Um, when we welcome Patrick McMahon, Economic Development Director, Andrew Surprise, the Executive Director of the Windsor Chamber of Commerce, and Ken Fredette, the Executive Director of First Town Downtown, uh, you are going to see that collaboration first and foremost. I want to draw your attention to a raffle that we're going to be um, having for this event. Again, Windsor is so lucky to have First Town Downtown, a nonprofit that's here to support all of the wonderful things that happen here. And we hope that you will consider supporting First Town Downtown as well as all of the proceeds are going to support that organization. And then finally, uh, I would like to thank our event sponsors, uh, Windsor Federal, our presenting sponsor. <laughs> Connecticut's Economic Development Association and the Windsor Chamber of Commerce, and our spotlight supporters, the Windsor Historical Society, Loomis Chafee School, PC Development Group, Fuss and O'Neill, FHI Studio, and PHB, and to thank all the wonderful entrepreneurs that gave us these treats today for you to enjoy. Um, Monetta Moments um, who presented us with all these delicious desserts, the bean for the coffee and sandwiches, and little patty shop for patties that are ridiculous if you haven't had them already. So I am very excited to introduce some folks that are going to be um, setting the stage for what you'll be hearing. Things are going to go forward, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So again, thank you all so very much. I'm so excited and thrilled to welcome our DPCC Commissioner Alexandra Dom to say a few words from um, at the podium. We are so grateful for your leadership here in the state of Connecticut. 
making it a great place to work and live and play, uh, and also how much you appreciate, I know, a good Main Street and its vibrancy. So thank you so much for being here.
and it's been a journey. And if you're like me, I wanted it yesterday. It's come on, let's get it done. And it's all the pieces are coming together now to make it great. And there's so many people to thank, and I don't want to leave it all, you know, anyone out. But our mayor, our town manager, Peter Sousa, who has worked tirelessly on this, the board of First Down Downtown, um, their director. But it is, it's like the perfect storm coming together, and this is all going to um, pull together. And coming from a trip to Spain, where they do have real main streets and squares, and they spend a lot of time out at the little coffee shops and doing in families, etc. Ours is beginning to look like that, where people can go and have quality of life and be a community. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Uh, welcome, good afternoon, and um, I wanted to say that Windsor Federal was very happy to sponsor this event. You know, this is a, uh, Windsor is the first town in the state and the best town in the state, and it's an opportunity to showcase our downtown and some of the opportunities we have. Windsor Federal is the hometown bank here, obviously. We have many of our representatives here today. Uh, we are also the only bank headquartered still in Hartford County, so, you know, we, we take pride in that. And, you know, I think uh, most of you know the bank. Uh, historically, we've been focused, consumer, residentially oriented, and we still do a great job uh, in that area. We have Jen Corretto here today from our residential side and many other representatives from our retail uh, areas as well as our commercial lenders. So please uh, mingle and say hello to them. But, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to showcase uh, where the town can go. Uh, there's great opportunity. Uh, I know there's a lot of projects that we've been involved with here immediately in the downtown. I, I saw Greg Baca here earlier, which is a great new project that's kicking off. Dr. and Neil Sostev, who have uh, some holdings down here in town and some great opportunities that they're looking to move forward. And Winter Federal is happy to be part of that. The town does a great job partnering with business, very business friendly. Peter Souza, Patrick McMahon, and others in the town that have uh, really assisted in uh, development and really uh, is, is known. The, the reputation of the town is that of a business-friendly town, and I think that's very, very important. So anyway, Windsor Federal is very happy to be involved, and uh, thank you for coming today. Very much appreciate it. Association. It uh, has been around since 1962, believe it or not, and it started out as an organization uh, for uh, EDCs, commissions, who, because there were no economic development professionals in the state of Connecticut. So the EDCs got together, they formed CETUS, and uh, it actually had a slightly different name back then. Um, but now, today, it is not just uh, municipal economic development professionals, such as Patrick McMahon, uh, former past president of the organization and uh, Jim Burke and many other uh, municipal economic development directors who are members, but also it's now more broadly uh, folks that uh, intersect with economic development, such as organizations like Connecticut Main Street. Michelle McCabe is one of our board members, for example. So um, it, it, it creates a nice mix and synergy. Uh, we work on educational programs. One of our newest uh, programs that I just want to mention is best practices in economic development and land use, something that came together over a several years effort. Now we're in our third year uh, awarding you know, gold and silver and bronze uh, standard uh, awards in economic development and land use. We're gonna present those awards at our annual meeting. And learn more about us, stop by CCM at the convention and see us there. We're gonna be on the floor. We're gonna be doing a session. Uh, you can also go to CETUS 
uh, .org. To, we have a brand new website, so take a look at that. But we want to thank Connecticut Main Street for allowing us uh, to be a, a co-sponsor of this event. Thank you. So, Windsor, we are just so fortunate, location, 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 midway between Springfield and Hartford, a uh, big uh, asset to us. Uh, we have Bradley International Airport right over uh, the border of Windsor, Windsor Locks, and we're the, the first town in Connecticut. Uh, Weathersfield debates that, but truly, <laughs> Windsor is the first town in the, in the state of Connecticut. We are fortunate to have the uh, Day Hill Corporate uh, area that has 26 26,000 jobs. We are a regional job center. And as uh, the commissioner mentioned, we want to draw that those folks down to the downtown to, to go to our restaurants, etc. Uh, we are made up of several historic villages, which is kind of weaved together into uh, a great tapestry. Next slide. All right, our town green is our, basically our front porch, or our front yard. It is an absolute wonderful gathering place for the community that we try to activate uh, throughout the year with various uh, events that uh, uh, 
and we'll get into a little bit more uh, in depth. You'll see a lot of these uh, sites on the walking tour today. This is the focus of it. Um, it's the Broad Street Green National Historic District. So it is on the National Register. Next slide. All right, again, we're very fortunate to be on the, uh, the train line here. We've already had a couple of uh, pass through just for you. Um, <laughs> we have the Amtrak as well as the Hartford line commuter rail. It goes from Springfield uh, to New Haven. And because of that, there's been developer interest in this area. It started actually at least 15 years ago uh, with a uh, historic mill that got converted to 50 uh, condominiums by the Corporation for Independent Living, CIL. A few years later, uh, the uh, building on the bottom uh, left was the Windsor Station Apartments, 130 apartments developed by Marty Kenny of uh, Lexington Partners. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, both the uh, historic train station and the freight house were devoted to the arts, which has been uh, fantastic. Next slide. So that was just the beginning. More excitement is coming. So on the, the left there is Windsor Center Plaza. Uh, we have a essentially a, a tired uh, strip center uh, at the, the, the top of uh, our, basically our main street, Broad Street. And Kev, uh, sorry, Greg Baca, uh, who's in the back here, is working with various uh, Mara partners and others uh, to develop 106 units of housing. And there is going to be a portion of them that are affordable with first floor commercial space. Exactly what we want in the town center. Right now, the parking lot goes right to the street, and it's basically that traditional suburban setback. This is going to bring that building right up to the street, really add that vitality. And then on the right here, uh, on the top, is Bowfield Greens. That's going to be 77 market rate apartments. Uh, Dr. Sashtad uh, will be developing that down uh, the Quantic Avenue. This is going to add to the street spending power we we're really excited about. Next uh, slide. Uh, the Plaza Building. For those who grew up here in town, the Plaza Building has a lot of emotional attachment. It was a one screen movie theater that you could uh, go to for a dollar. I got to see Star Wars there when I was like eight years old. I never <laughs> forgot it. And uh, obviously, movies and movie um, industry has had a lot of changes. Um, Dr. Sashtev uh, is investing uh, tremendous resources to take that building and bring it back online. It's going to have, have more of a cabaret, I would say, sort of uh, feel to it for uh, live music and seminars, movies, and, and that type of thing. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to tour it today. We can get that uh, slide out to, to, to folks. Um, come back when it's done because it is going to be a major attraction uh, to our community. Next slide. All right, this is a sort of a, an arm off of uh, our Broad Street. You're not gonna see it today. So we just decided to throw up a couple of photos. We have some great small businesses in town, whether that's restaurants, uh, professional services, uh, and some destination uh, retail. So on Quantic Ave, we've got uh, some very beautiful, once again, beautiful historic buildings. Next slide. And then down Palisado Avenue, uh, this is our local historic district. It dates uh, back many years. The, the bottom center is the Oliver Ellsworth Homestead. So we had a, uh, a framer of the Constitution, very well known, uh, wrote the Judiciary Act. He was the third Chief Justice of the United States. The words United States came from Oliver Ellsworth. So come back again another day and tour the Oliver Ellsworth Homestead. We have a great historical society. Doug Shipman uh, is present today, so please try to bump into, bump into him. Next slide. Uh, we're at the confluence of two rivers. I mean, we really are so be uh, we benefit so greatly from that. The Farmington and the Connecticut rivers uh, come uh, right behind uh, where we are uh, today. Uh, Loomis Chafee School, a private secondary school. We have uh, Rich Esposito, who is the CFO of Loomis and the past president of uh, the First Town Downtown. So thank you, uh, Loomis, for participating. We have a wonderful one-mile river trail, and we're hoping someday to extend that uh, and have it connect to Riverfront Recaptures Trail System. We received the state grant for uh, $240,000 to help with the, the design of that. So that's in the in process. Next slide. 
We are hoping to do a, uh, a road dive. Right now it's two lanes in each direction. Uh, the speed of traffic can uh, be pretty high. And for pedestrians, it doesn't always feel uh, like the safest environment. The goal is to try to reduce it to one lane in each direction with the center turn lane, some bump outs at the crosswalks to make it so that it's more uh, pedestrian friendly. We have representatives of VHP in the design firm right here. So bump into her and if you want to talk more about uh, complete streets and slowing traffic down in your, in your town center. We want to make it more pedestrian friendly. Next slide. We established a tax increment financing district. Uh, this was a program uh, that Connecticut Main Street Center, CETUS, and others helped uh, put through the legislature in 2015. It is a very flexible tool. Uh, the person who actually drafted the legislation is sitting in the front uh, row here, Mike D'Andriana. Uh, and so if you have questions about TIF tax increment financing, please uh, reach out to us, reach out to uh, Mike Andriana. What this is gonna do is it, it, it basically takes some future tax revenue that's generated, we get to designate it straight back into the town center. So we're gonna capture 75% of any new revenue and we'll use it for facade programs, small business uh, activities, uh, that type of thing. And we can also utilize it for uh, developer assistance. We provided uh, Greg Vaca's project a credit enhancement agreement. So that was the incentive to get them to get them going. Wonderful tool. More communities should be looking at it and establishing that. So I think that's my last slide. All right, it's yours. Hey everybody. Um, I'm Ken Fredette. I am the uh, pretty new director of First Town Downtown, uh, Connecticut's uh, Windsor's Main Street program. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about me and how I got here. Um, because I think it'll touch on a lot of points. So I'm from West Springfield, Massachusetts, originally home of the Big E, um, and I have worked in Rocky Hill slash Hartford for 20 years, uh, and 15 years ago, I got tired of making that commute every day, uh, and every time I would come up 91 to go home, I would cut through this little town at exit 34 or exit 37, and I would go up Route 159, and I would stop at where it's get a sandwich or stop at the donut shop and get a coffee. Um, and something just sort of lit in my mind that that would be a really fun place to live. And so I have been here for 15 years now. Uh, I've lived downtown with my wife and my son. It's a, an amazing place to raise a family, to just be a person and enjoy like <laughs> life and stuff. And so when this job came available, I pounced on it because I wanted to be part of all the stuff that I see and to, to help it continue to grow and develop. Uh, I've been a volunteer at the Art Center for about 12 years, uh, and I've been with the Lions Club for another 10 or so. Uh, so I've done a lot of things in town, but I really want to be like engaged uh, with, with everything that can happen. So, uh, if you're not a member of First Town Downtown, feel free to join. Uh, but there's so much going on with it. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Uh, we do a lot of events. We do. Um, Seasonal events, we've got Restaurant Week at the beginning of the year, which features an auction of a lot of different local crafts people who donate items. Um, I want a bench this year. Um, and we have the, you know, so I'm jumping all around. We've got the Monarch Festival in July. We've got Nightmare on Broad Street, which is our Halloween program on Halloween. Uh, we've got a Torchlight Parade and the Carol Sing uh, in early December. We've got the Farmer's Market every Thursday from June to October, which will stop by today. We've got the Summer Concert Series, which just wrapped up, uh, but has eight different concerts throughout July and August, again, every Thursday, so people can go to the Farmer's Market and then walk across the street and go to the concert on the green, as Patrick mentioned. And we have a lot of other events, uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, that we don't necessarily put on, but that we help support. So we've got coming up on October 7th, the Chili Challenge, which is put on by the JCs, uh, as well as a Lions Club craft fair. The Lions have two craft fairs, uh, one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, and this is sort of a joint event where half the green is the Chili Challenge and half the green is the craft fair. Um, and hopefully people come out and we don't uh, we have weather just like this, my hope. Um, and we also have, next slide please. Um, and we just have activities that we try to do year round to keep a presence, to keep people in, 
involved and engaged. We've got a Heritage Brick program where people can nominate somebody to receive a brick that we put up our, our uh, patio um, out on the Broad Street Green, the North Green, across from CBS. And we'll also in the CBS windows, we've had different organizations put up uh, whatever events they've got going on. So we put up one for a Monarch Fest, the Education Foundation, we have something for the Art Center is putting on a uh, series of plays at the end of this month, um, September 28th to 30th. Uh, and so they have a sign up there too, but also year round things. So people can promote whatever they want in town. It's a high visibility area that people can say, there's something I want to be part of. Um, and we've got banners, gift card program. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Chamber. I started mid-May, um, just to tell you a little bit about myself as well. Uh, former city councilor in Westfield, Massachusetts. Uh, ran a 15-pound 400 square mile chamber in Massachusetts. I do know how to bring tourism from Massachusetts, so I will be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a couple of talking points um, that I want to get across. I don't want to forget, so I did write them down. Um, so the chamber in Windsor uh, has been very supported by the town. We are the tourism center for the town. Uh, we are starting to um, work with other towns in the region, other chambers, uh, through the TVCA, the Dr. Valley Chamber Alliance, to actually um, create a bigger footprint for us to be able to advertise the town. Uh, we know that we can do more by working collaboratively um, and creating coalitions, and that, that's why we work so very closely with the Arts Center, with First Town Downtown, and with the town. Uh, and open communication, obviously, is key to being able to help activate downtown. Uh, the Museum Association, we also work very closely with. Uh, there's a, a group brochure, that, uh, it's called the Wayman brochure, you'll see it. When you're touring, uh, the chamber is hosting uh, four of the five museums. You want me to say Yeah, okay. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the chamber will be hosting four of the five museums um, at the chamber's offices uh, today for part of the tour um, because they are not centered in downtown, but they are an important part of our tourism and we want to promote that. Uh, next slide. And so we know that art is very important. As someone who's co-founded an arts organization in the past, um, I can tell you that working with uh, the Art Center is going to be key to activating downtown. Uh, you don't want you do want to capitalize uh, on art and culture in the center. It draws pedestrian traffic. It helps local businesses, um, art sales, local. Uh, some of the things we want to do, art sales, art walks, youth, live music downtown, um, what we call small ball events, which uh, fill in between the larger events the town holds, um, creates interest and draws people to the deep downtown center. Uh, we also want to do public art, sculptures, murals. There is a mural that just went up, you'll see it right here. Um, there's other murals that are starting to go up and uh, you'll see some, uh, as you start to drive through Windsor and then your future, you'll see more murals. Uh, next slide. We have uh, a, min a lot of amenities in walking distance, as you see. Uh, a lot of restaurants, uh, hardware stores, obviously Windsor Federal Banks, uh, grocery store. So that's always very important. One thing, uh, we do all know that there's a lack of retail and we are planning to address that. And there are certain programs that we don't want to talk about right now, but that we, uh, we are going to be working on, especially with the, uh, the uh, residential that's located in downtown. It's going to be very important to that. Uh, next slide. We know small businesses drive our downtown economy, uh, create an entrepreneurial ecosystem, and uh, help create new ventures downtown. And we're thrilled that uh, our new member, Windsor Works, which is right over here, um, is uh, having a ribbon cutting next week. We invite you out on the 20th to, uh, to come to that. Uh, but they are, uh, they received the $50,000 grant from the town uh, from American Rescue Act funds and that will help them implement an incubator assisting five businesses uh, through an immersive uh, process of training so that they can actually be successful. And so entrepreneurialism is very, very supported in Windsor. The chamber is very supported, business is very supported. We invite you to, if you, had, if you haven't been to Windsor, um, looking at it for our business, and small business in particular in downtown, we invite you to talk to the chamber, talk to First Town, talk to Patrick, we will be happy to take you on a tour and find you any location that you thought might be suitable for you. Uh, we invite you back. 
Thank you. Where you're going to find a coupon for the farmer's market that you're going to 